Hello everyone, welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And today we're going to be doing a combined 15 from the British and Irish Lions versus the African match. The British and Irish Lions obviously taking a 1-0 lead in the Test Series after their 22 points to 17 victory over the Springboks. A lot of backlash over a lot of... Um, um, negativity towards sort of the Bok coaches and the Bok game plan, which sort of comes to light. And it kind of is the problem when you sort of play a very kicking orientated, very sort of tactical, very territory driven game um, and don't throw the ball around. And is that whilst it works and, and, when it, and when you're winning, you know, very few people will complain. You know, they might not like it, but, you know, it's hard to argue against the results. But as soon as you start losing, you know, a lot of the naysayers pop up. And I think there's probably been a little bit of an overreaction in terms of the entire result as a whole, you know, this is a team which was always going to struggle. We, I mean, we spent the entire last week saying that this is going to be a massive ask for the Springboks. And then they lose by five points and everybody's sort of knee-jerk reaction as well. They rubbish, the coaches are poor, poor decisions, stuff like that. I mean, I think it was, I think we saw some very, very good moments from both sides. And all I thought was, was that it was quite an enjoyable test. I thought it was a test that was on an knife edge and could have gone either way, literally down to the fact that the Springboks were attacking, you know, two, three minutes over the extra 80 minutes to try and score a try to potentially win the game. Um, so I think we don't need to worry too much. I think it sort of sets that, this test up very nicely. Um, you know, if the Springboks can get one back, then it should be an absolute cracker of a final test. But before we look at the uh, combined 15 from the past weekend, please do smash a like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. So in terms of what we did, it's pretty much a, a man for man for man. You know, going 1 through to 15, who was the best performing? So who was the best loose set? Who was the best scrum off? Who was the best inside center? Um, of the day and in terms of the split we've gone with the six nine split in terms of six spring marks players and nine British and Irish Lions players a couple of them are a little bit debatable but I think a lot of it kind of picked itself you know I think it was quite uh, which probably kind of makes sense sometimes you know in certain positions when one player did where one 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 team's player didn't do very well the other team's player did do very well in that position which often is you know when, they, when they're being pitted against against each other you know kind of makes sense you know your fly house kind of makes sense and your your, your inside centers are literally running at each other. So it's easier to sort of pick out who was the better one. Um, but yeah, I mean, and it doesn't mean that the player didn't get picked that had bad games. It just means that the opposite number offered more or did more to earn their sort of spot. So that's how we're going to do it. So we're going to go 1 through to 15, and then we'll look at how it all sort of shapes up right at the end. Number one, I've gone with Oxen Che. I thought that he was very, very good. Um, you know, scrum time, he gave Tally for a long a bit of trouble, actually, you know, I mean, he was even sort of asked a bit about it in the post-match conference. They sort of said, you know, what was, what was, you know, you're thinking, how did you manage to sort of um, get the bit of him and, and sort of cope against him? And he was just sort of talking about the the, the work he had done and, and the study he had done on, on Taylor Furlong. But I thought he was very impressive. He made all his tackles. He made four carries. Um, he looked very, very good, Oxen Chan. I think that we all kind of agree that changing the front row, um, which for me is all in the team of the week, or combined 15, rather, a lot of people saying that changing it too early was a mistake. So interesting to see what you guys have, have gone with that. Um, Hooker, was, Hooker was probably one of the hardest ones. I've gone with Bongi Manambi because I just didn't think he did anything wrong, really. Um, he made one carry, made one tackle, but set pieces were very solid. I didn't, you know, the lineup was just working um, for him. You know, scrum time, as I said, that front row I thought was very solid. I don't think he did anything wrong. Um, you know, and I think it's difficult when, weirdly, the Springboks had more possession in the first half, which we, which we don't usually do in a game. We don't usually have more possession. Um, you know, so we didn't really get to see his his sort of um, tackling ability, and he didn't really get used as a ball carrier as much. But I don't think he did anything wrong. Luke Cowan Dickey was the sort of um, it was between him and obviously Luke Cowan Dickey. I don't think he knows the Malcolm Marks. Malcolm Marks made a lot of tackles off the bench, um, but didn't really have as big of an impact as he probably wanted. But I thought Luke Cowan Dickey struggled a little bit with the lineups when he first began. He did get a try. He sort of grew into the game. Um, I think he slipped uh, two or three tackles, which is as many as he made. So, you know, there were errors in his game. I think you look at Bongi Manambi and you think, could he have done more? Yes, but did he do anything wrong? Probably not. Um, just like I've gone with Trevor Nyakani at tight head. I thought Trevor was really, really good. So much opposition towards him being picked. And then, as we said, a lot of conversations saying that he shouldn't have gone off. Um, he made three carries. He made five tackles. Didn't miss a single tackle. He won a very, very important turnover, which, which actually got us points. Um, which was good to see. He looked quite um, active and he scrummed very, very well. I think he got a penalty against Roy Sutherland. So, so big ups to Big Trev because I think that he came through and, and played pretty well. And I thought Taylor Furlong was, was quite good as well. So it was quite a difficult sort of um, two in between them. But, you know, I'm um, Trevin Connie made as many tackles. He made too few um, carries. Didn't really get... Um, Taylor Furlong didn't exactly make too many um, sort of storm runs like we have seen him. You know, maybe probably better in hand, but I thought scrum time. I thought if Trev had played the same amount of, of time... I think it would have been quite interesting to sort of see how he had managed to to do it. Because Taylor Furlong got 67 minutes, but Trevor got only 40. But I thought Trevor's 40 was was arguably as good and probably better than Taylor Furlong's, you know, full 67. For the lock combination, it was pretty easy. Number four has to be Mario Itoje. 
man of the match performance from him, you know. Uh, four carries, eight tackles, and a single tackle missed. I think, you know, three turnovers, very important turnovers on the one. A lot of people debating whether those turnovers were completely legal. But at the end of the day, the ref doesn't pick them up. Then you've done something really well. You know, you say, I mean, they, they, he saved them from a try scoring opportunity. It was absolutely immense with Mario Toja, you know. And the funny thing is, I thought the SA locks were pretty good as well. I mean, Franco Master, I think, topped the tackle charts. Um, even Etzebe also made a lot of tackles. But, you know, you just got to look like for like. And I think it's, it's Mario Toje um, was, was probably better than Evan Etzebeth. You know, man of the match. Difficult to, to disagree with that one. And the number five, I've gone with Alan Wynn jones You know, I thought that he was absolutely in. He will captain this combined 15. I thought he was superb as a captain. I thought he looked very, very fit in and around the park. You know, he made five carries. He made 10 tackles. He beat a defender. You know, I thought the lines were pretty solid or thing, but I thought his leadership was probably the biggest thing. You know, a calm head, didn't panic. Obviously, what he said at halftime really did help galvanize the players because it was a brilliant second half performance. And to have come through all what he's done and then go play a full 80 minutes like he did. I mean, he didn't look like he'd been away, did he? I'm um, very, very impressive stuff from Alan Wynn Jones, as was the very impressive stuff that we're gonna see from our number six, Courtney Lord, who I thought had a bit of a a slow first half, but second half, what a performance from him. Really, really did justify a selection. A lot of people saying that Tate Burns should have had the nod. I think even at half time, people still think, man, maybe Tate Burns should be coming on. But he ended up making eight carries, nine tackles, two defenders beaten, two offloads, uh, one clean break, 33 meters gained. He won a turnover as well. Missed just the one tackle. I thought Courtney Laws was probably in sort of the three or four most impressive players throughout the performance. So very, very good to see that he sort of made the best of the opportunities. I mean, the number seven jumper, I've gone with Peter Steph de Toy. Uh, he made 13 tackles. Um, obviously, he was played a big part in, in, the, in the try that the Springboks did score, and that wasn't ruled out. Um, you know, capitalizing on, on the line, sort of defensive line being a little bit in tatters, and then showed some really good pace to just put them under pressure. Um, made his carries, and you know what? I think, you know, if you're looking at his competition, I thought Hamish Watson probably should have gotten sent off. So, you know, I don't think he provided much competition. Um, I don't think that... I think Tom Curry was, was pretty good. So statistically, he was pretty good. Um, but he conceded two penalties that were both unconverted. So he literally conceded six points. And I think at one stage in the game, he conceded the first three penalties for the British and Irish Lions. All of them were him. So I thought he, he, put, he was the reason the British and Irish Lions were under pressure very early on. We looked like the Supreme Mocks were, were really up for it. It was because he was giving away sort of silly penalties. But number eight, there can be no sort of complaints. It has to be Jack Conan. Somebody who's, who I, I think even Gatlin sort of um, you know, mentioned it goes very much under the radar does Jack Conan. He ended up making 11 carries, six tackles, um, didn't miss a single cat tackle, made 48 meters across his 11 carries, you know, four defenders beaten. I thought of a very solid effort with Jack Conan. He's nothing flashy, he's nothing flash. You know, he's not necessarily fatal who will run over people and make these big bruising tackles, but he's very reliable under the high ball. He's always a willing ball carrier. He finds some space. He works very hard. He's, I think he's everything you'd want, really, in a test match number eight because he's just such a consistent performer. And he's played his way, he played his way into a starting lineup, and I thought he was, he was pretty solid. Um, also quite impressive is the number nine. I'll go with Ali Price. Now, people were quite sort of um, torn between Factor Clerk's performance, um, which, which I thought was quite interesting. Now, some people are saying he played well. Some people are saying he didn't play particularly well. I thought some of his kicks were pretty good. Um, some of his picks were a little bit um, too close to the touchline. Um, but I thought Ali Price, you know, won the tactical battle. You know, I thought his kicking was very, very good. It did help that the South Africans weren't particularly good under the high ball, where the lines were much better. Um, and Ali Price managed it very, very well. You know, I think he was probably quite a surprise started he made all his tackles when he had to make i thought his delivery was was pretty good for after a couple of um misplayed passes um i thought ali price was, was pretty i think he's been growing throughout the entire tour and i thought he was another very good performance from him and i wouldn't be surprised if they i would be i wouldn't be surprised if they put conan murray back in if they want to sort of really really um, go after that um that aerial battle because conan murray is one of the best box kickers and tactical kickers in world rugby but you know ali price definitely did not do him a disgrace from this weekend and uh, number 10 i go with dan bigger you know, it wasn't a damn big a masterclass. We've seen better, we had better games from the fly half, but his kicking was, I mean, he missed one kick, which I probably should have got, but apart from that, his kicking was pretty solid. Um, I thought his tactical kicking was quite good. Um, he scored 14 points. Um, you know, make, made five tackles, he made a turnover as well, uh, to my knowledge. And I thought that Andre Pollard looked very good in the first half, looked very assured, but missed those two kicks, which I think, I mean, they were quite crucial in the end. He, missed, he left five points out there, and five points that he should have probably gotten. Um, you know, I think, you know, I mean, Dan Bigger missed three points as well, but arguably I don't think it was even a penalty. So I don't really sort of count that as much. Whereas I think Andre Pollard, the conversion was was pretty straightforward. And I thought that penalty, you know, you someone who's any 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 player of test match quality should be sort of slotting those penalties. Um so that's why I've gone with Dan Bigger. Uh the wings, I've gone with the Lions wings as well. So in the number eleven jumper, doing in front of Merva. Um, you know, two defenders beaten, 25 meters gained. 
um, was much better on the high ball than our wings. Um, two, two turnovers, one as well, four tackles made. I don't think he was phenomenal. I think a lot of people are saying that maybe Liam Williams should be coming in for him, but he outplayed our wings at the end of the day. I thought Michael Zona, Pimpy, and Chez and Colby, through no fault of their own, really, in terms of their attacking intent, had no opportunity and therefore didn't do much, and they weren't, either, neither of them were particularly good under the high ball, um, which is where you know the aerial battle really did, did choke us. Um, so I've gone to Infanta Merv in the number 11 jumper. Um, in the number 12, it has to be Damon Delendi. I thought that the Springbok centers were, were, were a bit of a shining light in that back line. But Damon Delendi made 53 meters gained, uh, two, two one defender beaten, six tackles made, you know, some bruising collisions, some very, very good ball carrying, some pretty solid defense. One of the best inside centers for a reason. I thought we saw just how important he is, especially in terms of his, of, of his breakdown. We didn't even win any turnovers, but very good at the breakdown and very important defensively, as is our number 13, Lucanio Um. Brilliant, brilliant game from him. I, mean, I thought that you know he made some massive tackles on Elliot Daly. Um, you know, was was very clever with um, his defensive reads. Didn't have a lot to do. I mean, we didn't have, we didn't have a lot, a lot of a lot of ball in play. So I mean, I think he only made a couple of carries, but he made 18 meters and one clean break. We need to get the ball more to our centers, do we? You know, especially sort of Amlakanya Am. He's got the ability to bring our wings into the game, but we don't really sort of go much more than Damien Delendi as, as a sort of crash ball runner. But I thought Lacanio Am. Um, um, was very good and and outplay. I think the Springbok centers in general outplay the Lions um, players, which I think a lot of people agree with. A lot of people calling for for Henshaw and Elliot Daly, who I don't think were bad, but were nothing special to potentially be replaced. Somebody like Bundy Aki maybe coming in a bit more powerful. Maybe Chris Harris, who's a bit more of a solid, solid defender. Um, but in the number fourteen jumper, Anthony Watson for me was was better than Chesson Colby. Um, seven defenders beaten and all flow twenty five meters gained. There he got them out of trouble a couple of times, quite lateral sometimes when he was running, but. You know, it was quite composed, and I thought Chesson Colby struggled to get to the game. He had no sort of go forward ball, no opportunity to really run at the lines. Um, it wasn't phenomenal under the high ball, so it was, as I said, it was difficult for our wings to sort of get into into the games. And then finally, at full back, I've gone with Stuart Hogg. Billy Leroux, very important player for for the Lions, but defensively was a little bit nowhere. I think he, I think he missed three tackles, only made one. Um, his kicking was 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 probably not his best as well. Um, still remains a pretty important player for for the Springboks, and if he's fit, I'm sure he'll probably be um, in the starting line once again. Because you know, just in terms of the defensive system, in terms of um, you know, even on the on, on the attack, he's a very important cog within that Springbok system. So uh, I think he's a very important player. But I thought Stuart Hogg was very very composed, almost a brilliant try saving tackle on uh, Marcus Pimpy when he held him up over the line for the ball spilled back. Um, thought he was pretty good under the high ball when he needed to be. A lot of people say maybe Liam Williams is coming because he's better under the high ball, but I think Stuart Hogg is such a calm figure, calm presence, his positional play is pretty good, his kicking was pretty decent, I don't I don't really sort of understand why there's sort of a big call to see him drop, because I thought, I thought it was pretty pretty good, um, but let me know what you think of this of this lineup, um, if you look at the entire lineup, this is how it goes, so as I said, so six South African players, um, sorry, seven South African players, I lie actually, Oxen Chair, Bongi Manambi, and Trevor Nyakani, those three, they in Peter Toy four, um, no, it is five, five, six, and Damien Lindsay and Lacanya, um, five, six. Yeah, it is five, six players. So, yeah, six players, four in the pack. The full front row, I thought the starting front row for Spring Box was better, and the centre pairing in particular were very impressive. But apart from that, it was a Lions dominated performance. You know, that pack, you know, Courtney Laws was brilliant, Jack Conan was brilliant, Mario Tojan, and Elwin Jones was, was pretty good. Um, well, they were brilliant, actually. I think I think Jack Conan probably more good than brilliant. But the back line, you know, those outside backs just outplayed the spring marks. They were better under the high ball. They, they, they had more opportunity to with ball in hand, and they sort of used it a little bit better. So it's just sort of see what this looks like next week. You know, how many of these sort of players respond? How many of these players can continue outplaying their opposite number? And at the end of the day, if, you out, if every single person outplays their opposite number, you win the game. It's kind of how it works. So it's interesting, obviously, how these individual battles sort of go within the sort of big sort of, um, you know, big game itself. But let me know what you think of the side. Alan Jones was, was, I thought, was phenomenal as captain yesterday. Was was in the refs' ear a lot, but, you know, that's what you got to do. And I thought he managed the game pretty well from a refs' point of view. Was asking the right questions. Communication was very good. Very calm presence. So, yeah, I'm very impressed. But let me know what you think. Which changes would you make? Um, probably the, sort of the ones which are a little bit questionable. Maybe Bungie Manambi. Um, you know, case for maybe Peter Steph toy and maybe not being there. Maybe Tom Carey in there. Um, apart from that, I don't think there are too many players which you can really sort of argue that. But if you want to, jump in the comments and let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. Smash like on the video and subscribe to the channel. My name is Steven and I'll talk to you guys very soon.